This is the Lipsia Addy 7 with printing mechanism. I have another Lipsia Addy 7 which was made in 1950 without a printing mechanism, but this one is much earlier. It's from the early 1930s. The variant with the printing mechanism was not very successful, so this is quite rare. Lipsia is a company that was founded by Otto Holzapfel. He used to work for Triumphator, but in 1918 he left that company to set up his own, and Lipsia is the Latin name for Leipzig. That's where Triumphator was based, and it's also where Lipsia is based. This is an allusion as well to the uh, other company, Brunsviga, which is the Latin name for Brunswick, where that company is, uh, is founded. So Otto Holzapfel made pinwheel machines, and in 1928 he also made a small, simple adding machine called the Lipsy Addy. Uh, in 1930 that was replaced by the Addy 7. After the war, after the Second World War, uh, Lipsia, or Leipzig is in East Germany, so eventually the East German state uh, took over Lipsia and Triumphator and merged them together and the Addy 7 was replaced by the Triumphator KA. I have a video showing the Triumphator KA elsewhere. So this is very similar to that. It has seven input pins. Uh, that's why it's called the Addy 7. It has seven digits in the input. And when you set the input pins, the number you enter is immediately also added to the main register. You can press this blue button to clear the input and then add another number or enter another number to add. The register carries over automatically of course. You can also subtract. To do that you press the S button and hold that down. You can then enter a number without changing what's on the register. And if you then release the S button and push these input pins back up to zero, then you do the actual subtraction. You do have to push those pins one at a time. It's very tempting to just push them all up at the same time. But if you do that, you might uh, yeah, lose a carry in the, uh, in the register and get the wrong result. I can show you that. If I pull these two pins forward, instead of adding 11, it will now add just one because the carry gets lost. I do really have to pull them one at a time. To clear the main register, there's a small crank at the side and that uh, clears it. Moving on to the printing, it has this large lever at the side and uh, when you pull that lever it prints whatever is in the input register. It cannot print what's in the main register directly. So if you uh, enter a number and pull the input lever, it prints it, but it also, uh, it also clears the input as well. So that you can immediately uh, add another number. You don't have to press the blue button anymore. The uh, paper feeds forwards th through, the, uh, through the mechanism. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, rubber rollers of, uh, of this uh, mechanism have degraded a bit, they've dried out, and uh, one of the rollers inside is slightly deformed. 
so the paper doesn't always feed through properly. Uh, if, uh, if you're not careful, If you're not careful, it prints over the previous line. So, uh, yeah, that's because even though this the axle turns the right amount, the paper just uh, slips. It doesn't get pushed forward enough always. Uh, yeah, the the printing it uh, it uses this uh, ink ribbon on these uh, spools. It's the same as with a, a typewriter, uh, but you do have to use the older, old-fashioned silk uh, ink ribbons. If you use a more modern nylon one, the printing just won't work on this. That's because on a typewriter the, the uh, letters are hammered onto the paper and uh, there a, a nylon ribbon is fine. But this printing mechanism uses much less force. It just moves this whole whole carriage up and just pushes it fairly gently against the ribbon. And for that you need a ribbon that uh, releases its ink easily. And silk ribbon does that. Um, okay, so let's also do uh, subtraction if you do a subtraction you press the S button and you hear this click and what that does is it lifts this small pin here and it also moves a printing head up here that will print a minus sign so when you enter a number, uh, this pin uh, will disable the automatic clearing of the input. This pin blocks the uh, printing lever from going all the way forwards. See, it's, it's blocked at that, uh, by that pin there. So the input stays here, so that you can still do the subtraction as you should. The number I've just printed does have a small uh, minus sign at the end of it there. It's a bit hard to see. Unfortunately the paper roll I have is not wide enough. I was not able to find a, a seven centimeter wide roll. So that's, uh, yeah, that's how the printing works. But, yeah, you might also still want to print the total. And to do that, yeah, you simply have to copy it into the uh, input. You can press this star button. That uh, moves this lever up again, but this time not adding a print head with a minus sign, but a print head with a, an asterisk that's to denote that this is a total. So if after you press that you can use the uh, subtraction uh, method to enter any number you want here but basically you probably want to copy whatever is in the main register and then print it and then you can clear it and uh, continue. Yeah, you can't really see the asterisk, it's gone slightly off the paper there. The uh, ink ribbon, uh, it gets uh, spooled, it moves from this spool to that spool. So, uh, yeah. No, actually, no, it goes the other way. So it, it pulls the ink ribbon over to, to the right. Once all the ribbon is on that right hand side spool you can simply flip this switch and that changes the direction. So now the spool on this side is uh, 
yeah, disconnected, and it's this side that uh, pulls it forward. Fortunately, I think this ink ribbon is slightly too wide for the mechanism, a millimeter or so too wide. It goes through these guides and uh, across the paper. There is a design flaw here. The these metal guides. Uh, this one is a, a solid piece of metal, but on the other side it's been replaced by this uh, piece of wire. And that's because uh, it must have broken off. The uh, printing lever, it gets, yeah, it gets stopped by this rubber stopper here and here. But uh, yeah, if that rubber degrades a bit, yeah, this, this lever will go forwards too far and hit this uh, guide. And that must have happened in the past at some point and it's broken off. Uh, later versions of the machine uh, fixed this design flaw by moving the rubber stopper to up here so that it can't uh, shoot through too far. So this was the Lipsia Addy 7. Thank you for watching.